to access your activities, you would go to Activity Management. Activities, Activity Management. Our Activity Management, by default, will show you plus or minus 90 days on the desktop browser. And it gives you access to filter by level, type, title, start date, end date, location, and if you can or cannot register for this activity. You can also show all activities or filter the activities by member. For instance, if you want to see all the activities in this grid that a certain member in your database has attended, you can do so by clicking filter by member and selecting that member. Each one of the activities listed, Jimmy Osborne has attended. On the mobile device, very similar, you've got all the activities. You can filter the activities by starting to type something in. So if I was looking for the activity at the James River State Park, I started typing in James, and the activity was filtered out, and that's the only one left. I can do the same if I wanted to filter by date. I can start typing in that date. And it will show me all the activities with a 08 slash 26 in the text. You can view more information on that activity by clicking View. From here, we have three separate tabs. Got the activity, basic information. The attendance, which can be sorted by this filter. This includes your custom filters under Unit Custom Filters. You can also look at the registration details, which can include instructions when you can start to register for this event, when the registration ended the max number of attendees and shows you also how many has registered. A person logged into the site can also click here to register for that event if they're already logged into the system. From here they can select if they're coming or not entering comments like they're available to drive or they need someone to pick them up or whatever their comments may be and then submit the RSVP. They can also see who's coming to the event from the registration and they can pay for it. We've got the same information on the mobile device. You can edit this information.
can select the start and end date and time or if it's an all day event you would click all day you can select if you want it to be included on the calendar or newsletter or not you can add additional credit towards options or if this particular campaign event does cannot be counted towards second or first class or it's not going to be counted towards pitch in a tent or leave no trace you can take these out of the credit towards and our system won't credit it toward those items we have other credit towards items in the list maybe this camping trip is going to be cabin camp you can add that and if it's not it can be removed and after making those changes you would simply click save activity same changes can be made in the mobile browser you can give it a different title if you like it doesn't have to match the activity type by default the activity type will be put in for event title but you can give it some additional description here and that'll show up on your calendar you can also mark your attendance you can simply check these boxes to put whatever's in the attendance marker box in for the attendance for those scouts you can mark them as RSVPN for the event You can check if they have turned in their permission slip and if they've paid. When you're done, click Save Attendance. For the registration, if you want your members to be able to register for this activity you check the activate registration for this activity checkbox you can type in instructions if you have special instructions um, for how they should register maybe you want to include some instructions to explain your your cost down at the bottom you can set a date in which the registration starts, a date when the registration ends, and the max number of attendees. If it's set to zero, there will be no limit of attendees. You can add additional cost. to your activity that will show up when they go to register they'll see it's one dollar for scouts two dollars for adults and when you're done changing the information on the screen you click save registration settings the permission slip you can select a permission slip for this particular activity select our default permission slip in the system which looks like this you can edit this text and save as a new permission slip and then you'll have another permission slip in the system to pick from for your activities or you can use 
our default permission slip, we will inject the scout's name and your unit number into the text. We also will inject the activity location, the departure location, return location, departure times and dates, the title and so forth. And you click save when you're done editing that information. Okay, and after you have set up your permission slip, you can click on View and Attendance, and you can print permission slips for each of your scouts, or the scout will be able to come into the system and print his own. You pick the scout you want to print the permission slips for. And then you can print the permission slips. As you can see, it's got the scout's name injected into the permission slip along with the unit number and the activity information and the text 